Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Minerals Live. We have a special guest with us today, <laughs> and actually he is going to be a regular on the show. Yes, he is. Yeah, and we're excited to have him with us. Absolutely. Alan Hello. Knox, Alan formerly Knox. of JTV, now with uh, CEMI. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we're happy to have you with us. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, let's see. I started working for JTV, as you said, about... Mm -hmm. 18 years ago. Wow. Uh, and I was there for a very long time. Uh, after that, I've done some consulting work for some other places before I joined Collector's Edge. That's fantastic. Awesome. And we're really excited to have you with us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Jewelry Television is a, a good friend of the Collector's Edge, and uh, they are a huge uh, retail venue on. Mm -hmm. televisions all over the United States oh, yeah. and uh, I've always told Alan that if you can uh, survive for that <laughs> length of time in in that environment which is high pressure when you're on the air 364 days a year with new programming uh, every year uh, that's a lot of things that need to get done mm -hmm. and so uh, we're really yeah. lucky to have somebody with the kind of diversity of skill sets and and talents that Alan has so mm -hmm. all of you that are our customers here at Collector's Edge are going to be uh, meeting him at shows working with him on the uh, internet mm -hmm. he's going to be uh, uh, running our our, our internet uh, site and uh, f fulfilling orders, adding new inventory, getting things ready to go, and working on social media. Uh, so you'll you'll get to know Alan in great detail in the in the mm -hmm. months ahead. Mm -hmm. Poor guys, I feel sorry for all. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're happy to have you, and I know everybody will be happy to meet you. Sure, you're a very knowledgeable individual, and and uh, ha has some excellent knowledge in areas that mm -hmm. Richard and I are not as well versed uh, on mm -hmm. the uh, cut that gemstone <laughs> yes. side okay. of the world. So he adds a, another element to uh, the collector's edge uh, with mm -hmm. some great depth in, in uh, cut gemstones as well. So it's a, it's a wonderful addition to our team. Mm -hmm. We're Thank happy you, to have you here. Absolutely. And uh, you're coming in at a great time of year because mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be really, really busy in the days ahead. You know, uh, so, so many people across the uh, mineral industry are uh, bemoaning the fact that, that Tucson in the traditional January and February time period is, is much smaller this year than it normally would be. Uh, but because of that, uh, the, the COVID virus around the world, um, there's actually going to be two Tucson shows mm -hmm. uh, this year instead of one. So uh, <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, it, it seems to all the world that things are slowing down, but uh, Richard and I are mm -hmm. headed down uh, to, to, to kick off uh, in late January, the right. retail area, and our wholesale team is heading down. So we're going, there will be a show in mm -hmm. Tucson in... Uh, It'll be much smaller, and mm -hmm. everybody will be practicing appropriate uh, COVID-19 protocols, but mm -hmm. there will be things going on in Tucson, and we hope to see you there uh, in Jan late January, early February, and I'll give you more precise dates here in a minute about the locations. Mm -hmm. But then again, in April, there will be a much larger number of venues that plan to be open uh, April 7th through April 25th. So uh, this year in Instead of one time down in Tucson, we're going to get to enjoy the sun in Tucson and the, and the camaraderie mm -hmm. that goes on down there with mineral collectors and mineral dealers uh, in two visits this year instead mm -hmm. of one. So, uh, And then uh, Richard and I will also be hitting the road to do mm -hmm. a few road trips in your areas. I know a lot of you who listen to Minerals Live uh, have the pleasure of... Uh, our company as we travel it's around a <laughs> <laughs> as we as we head around the country with right. a van full of mineral specimens so mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're going to be very busy during the first uh, quarter or so of this Absolutely. year. So, and right. it's, it always seems to be that way. Mm -hmm. And Alan's going to be uh, participating at, at uh, some of the shows. Uh, uh, ironically, 
uh, the dates that were selected for the April show in Tucson, September uh, April 7th through April 25th, appear to overlap a show that has been going on for many years here in Denver in in April at the front end of that Tucson show period. Mm -hmm. And so Alan will probably be holding down the yeah, fort at the uh, Denver show mm -hmm. in April. So we're, we're all going to have tons of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of this is coming up on us very quickly. Our yeah. wholesale team is leaving in just a week and a half or so to head down. Yeah, me too. And, mm -hmm. and, and Richard heads <laughs> yeah, out on the road. Day, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What, what's the date of your departure? I'm going to leave the office here on the 17th yeah. and hopefully start hitting, uh, knocking on doors on the 18th. Great. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Richard will be going west uh, ahead of the Tucson show. Um, we're going to be, Richard and I are going to be at Mineral City. And uh, this year, instead of being a Keystone location, since the westward look is, is closed down, mm -hmm. our big room over at Mineral City, I think we're in Unit 9, if I'm not mistaken. Sounds right. Uh, we'll be at the, the Mineral City show, Unit 9, and we will be uh, there from Thursday, January 28th through Sunday, February 7th. So mm -hmm. we'll be there a little shorter period of time since the main show is not going on, the TGMS show is not going on in Tucson. We're going to wrap things up uh, after two weekends mm -hmm. at the uh, Mineral City location. But there are going to be a number of dealers at Mineral City with fine mineral specimens. And then the Sun Gemstone Warehouse, uh, where our wholesale folks uh, uh, sell Keystone material, and uh, the wholesale by the flat, that location will be open from about Friday, January 22nd through Sunday, February 7th. So a um, lot, of, lot of days available when you can come out and see some great uh, minerals. I know uh, Cristala will be down in town. I know Leonard Himes and Kel Graber will be in town. And there will be a number of fine mineral dealers. Top Gem will be open for the wholesale warehouse and a, a lot of other dealers. Uh, so many of us have individual units that open up into the outside side and they're they're not as highly restricted as a giant uh, ballroom would be in right. a convention center and so uh, all of us will be practicing the uh, Pima County guidelines uh, for health and safety and mm -hmm. we will uh, be uh, showing fine minerals and hope to see you down in Tucson absolutely so can't wait sh should be a fun time <laughs> it'll be different and lots of new material. Uh, we've been busily acquiring new material and getting it priced and labeled, uh, ready to go. Uh, they've already sent a number of pallets of material into mm -hmm. the Tucson area. And and uh, we, Richard and I will have full vans going down with retail material. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about this year for Richard and I being at the, uh, at the Mineral City location um, is that we will have 10 display cases in our room in the main showroom mm -hmm. area and we may put a couple back behind in our second room there in unit nine so we'll have a lot of real estate to put up beautiful mineral specimens mm -hmm. so uh, uh, if you are able to come down we encourage you to come see us at mineral city again we'll we'll be there from thursday january 28th through february 7th mm -hmm. and uh you'll see a ton of new material and and really great pieces we've got Got some brand new La Marita mine material, new material from the Detroit City Portal Project, uh, Rotocrosite Mining at Sweet Home. And uh, uh, new lots of Las Vegas amethyst will, uh, that are in in house. Some brand new uh, pink uh, apatites mm -hmm. from Bolivia, uh, ferberites from Bolivia, bornonites. Uh, just great lots of new material, mm -hmm. and as well as uh, individual pieces we've acquired uh, over the years. So we're mm -hmm. we'll have a ton of new material. We'd love to see you down there. Uh, it will actually be kind of fun because it'll be a little more laid back than yes. a normal year. Much, hey, I think there'll be so there'll be fewer dealers <laughs> around, and there'll be fewer collectors around. Right. So uh, we'll have some. Couches suitably uh, six foot spaced apart, and you can come down and talk with us in hang our out. room. <laughs> yeah, hang yeah. out and talk with us, and mm -hmm. we'll wear masks. You'll wear masks, and we'll all we'll all feel great. So, uh, and don't forget the hero lights, Steve. 
Oh, I forgot to mention the hero mm-hmm. lights. We are having mm-hmm. some mounted as yeah. we speak, mm-hmm. custom mounted Brazilian hero lights, mm-hmm. and they're quite attractive. We have one, only one, that looks like a poodle. A dead and, ringer. And it's a dead mm-hmm. ringer yeah. for a poodle. Yeah. So if you if you need a pink poodle mm-hmm. uh, in your collection, uh, it will be available mm-hmm. at the Mineral City Show. So yep. uh, just a little mm-hmm. preview of what's coming up. That's right. And although Richard could sell that I on his road trip. I got one person on my road trip that might like Might it. want mm-hmm. a poodle. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. but that will be available uh, at Tucson, mm-hmm. hopefully, if Richard doesn't sell it uh, yeah. uh, before. And as soon as the Tucson show closes down, I will be packing up mm-hmm. nice minerals along with some others that I'm bringing for specific people along the way. And I will be taking that to go east. And mm-hmm. I'm going to go to Texas and go to Florida and see customers all along the way. I'll mm-hmm. uh, probably do a little bit up in the southern part of the Midwest and, and uh, just have a, have a fun time. Awesome. So uh, we're going to be busy. It's going to be good. Yeah. yeah. A little less moving around when we're there, we're there which I'm going to like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, we're only at one location this Set year up for retail. Three, three or four setups instead of, you know, just one this year. So that'll be a little better. Yeah. And then a couple of months will pass by. April 7th, we'll be back down there again yep. mm-hmm. with new material. We're adding all the time. So, uh, so was Dave planning on trying to redo something, or is it just going to be Mineral City again? I think there'll be no be main, Mineral City. I don't no main think show, there'll yeah. be any main show in yeah. the calendar year 2021 right. and no uh, show, fine mineral show Full at the Westward, Westward Look. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, the area in and around Mineral City, there's uh, you know mm-hmm. Stan Espen Shades Warehouse mm-hmm. and and Top Gem Warehouse mm-hmm. and the Sun Gemstone area mm-hmm. with wholesale and Keystone and then Mineral City. So there's a lot of activity in that area, but uh, those larger venues mm-hmm. have thrown in the towel for 2021. Gotcha. And even the Gem people, the HDA, GGX, yeah. and all that. It's all done. Yeah, yeah, it's done for this year. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we had a tremendous success at, mm-hmm. at Denver, oh, Denver was awesome, during, yeah. the, during the uh, COVID mm-hmm. period here uh, la- at yeah. last year in September. Uh, there mm-hmm. were a suitable number of collectors yep. uh, who had come into town and, and plenty of dealers mm-hmm. with beautiful things to see. So it turned out being very successful right. there. I suspect these two shows in early 2021 will be successful for all, all concerned, both mm-hmm. the collectors and, and the dealers yep. uh, at, at the beginning of this year. Yep. So we're excited about it. Lots Absolutely. of good things going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, also... There are 24 hours a day mineral specimens That's available right. for sale That's through true. our website. That's right. Mm-hmm. And uh, Alan is busily <laughs> adding new things all the time. Mm-hmm. There we go. This is yeah. your, your new world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our new world. Yep. And, and don't forget the reserve. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Yep. yeah. We've got some killer things out on the reserve uh, mm-hmm. uh, available for sale, and a, a wonderful gallery of rhodochrosite mm-hmm. that our our uh, um, collectors who own a great um, sweet home mine rhodochrosite have been adding, mm-hmm. uh, volunteering to put pictures of their pieces on this uh, gallery within our website, and it's been a big hit. We've mm-hmm. had a number of people uh, add some really incredible pieces to the the gallery, and it's quite quite the thing to see. Right. So. Uh, Anyway, we hope you'll visit both the Reserve and our regular Collector's Edge uh, mm-hmm. Minerals Gallery. Mm-hmm. The well, final call section is really call. popular. Jeez, oh, can't hardly keep up with it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Lots of packages. Mm-hmm. Lots of packages. Alan's getting really proficient at packing <laughs> minerals and getting those out. Yep. Mm-hmm. I try. <laughs> what do you think so far of the place? Oh, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's a really good place to work. Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful yeah. place to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. any other thoughts, or do you just want to get into selling some rocks? Let's sell some rocks. All okay, right. all right. He's a man of few words. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Specimen number one. <laughs> what do we have here? I think we have a cabin site. It's a cabin site from Wagoli Quarries in India, mm-hmm. and I I'm always blown away by the color of cabin mm-hmm. site. Yep. It's such an intense, unique blue color. Mm-hmm. And uh, these, the, the Wagoli quarries, I believe, has uh, been 
shut down mm-hmm. because of the encroachment of uh, population around the mining area. Right. And uh, so hopefully these don't come to a complete end. I believe there may be another source or so. I think for there's them. one source yeah. left for them. Yeah. There. But uh, things like this are really, really special pieces. Mm-hmm. This is a nice, big cluster, a roundish cluster of the uh, cavensite crystals, and it looks like it's on some stillbite mm-hmm. uh, coated matrix. And the color contrast between that white stillbite matrix and the cavensite ball is just incredible. And this this is a huge sized uh, cavensite mm-hmm. uh, group. It's at looks like a couple spheres very close together. Right. in this radiating cluster and it, the whole cluster measures 3.5 centimeters across so it's a big one and what's the overall size of this one Rich? overall dimensions are 5.5 by 7 by 5.5 centimeters i love the color contrast mm-hmm. the condition of the piece is excellent and uh, you just don't get this color anywhere else it's right. just an intense saturated blue color yep. mm-hmm. and uh, a beautiful piece and i tell you You're going to be shocked at the price of this piece today because, as a general rule, pieces with this kind of aesthetic and this size are now going in the multiple four figures. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see this at uh, $1,500 to $3,000. I mean, it's a really, really nice piece. Mm -hmm. Um, With overall size in the small cabinet size range, Mm -hmm. three inches or so across. Mm -hmm. What's the... um, price on this guy today Richard? This specimen today we are just doing a final call price on it is four hundred dollars and I really love the uh, sugar coating sprinkles of the uh, calcite crystals on the cabin side. Yeah isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. Yeah I was wondering what what those uh, were in their mm-hmm. calcite crystals. Mm-hmm. Neat. Yep. Really a pretty piece. Yeah it's, it's a lovely mm-hmm. specimen and, and I think this one will evaporate. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're interested in in putting uh, your offer in on this, this is uh, four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Richard, send these out to you with no shipping that's cost right. on the way out. So yep. that's one of the other perks from watching Minerals Live. Minerals yep. Live is that we ship these out to you for free on the outbound leg, mm-hmm. and very little ever comes back because these are super deals. Yep. So we're really, uh, mm-hmm. really excited to have you watching Minerals Live today, and yep. and I hope you will. Uh, uh, want to toss your hat in the ring on that piece. Uh, yep. um, all of the emails you send in to request these things are, are time stamped, of course, as mm-hmm. they come through and the first come, first serve on all of them. So yep. if you're if you're interested in that, don't hesitate to uh, send in an email right away to uh, minerals at collectorsedge.com and Richard yep. will get that and we'll get that uh, specimen packed up and out to you and you'll be happy you did. There you go. There you Super go. thing. On to number two. <clears throat> wow, another great piece. Yep. Mm-hmm. You picked some good rocks here, Richard. Well, you know, our first. This is like our first episode since November, and and that was like a one episode since September. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is. A, it's been a real struggle to get Minerals Live back on the air recently with uh, Phil leaving and other factors. So I figured yeah. we better get back on the air with a, with a go. good assortment of minerals. You know. Well, you know, this this uh, brings up one of the things that Collector's Edge does very well. We are very plugged in to buying quality minerals directly from the source, and that allows us in most cases to be able to give you some great pricing on these things. Mm-hmm. We were one of the first dealers anywhere in the world that was given an opportunity to buy these very interesting and attractive wolfenites from mm-hmm. Shin... Uh, you're going to have to pronounce that for me. What's the, the Jinshan province? Jinshan. Yeah, okay. Oh, uh, Xinjiang. Okay. Xinjiang Xin, province. Xinjiang province. Because yep. I knew I was going to slaughter that. Mm-hmm. So, um, the... Uh, Actually, it's say, an autonomous region. I don't even think it's a province. Okay. <laughs> so, so... Um, we were offered an opportunity to buy a what was approximately a dump truck load size mm-hmm. of uh, wolfenites very early on. Probably the first uh, commercial opportunity to buy wolfenites. Apparently, this location was somehow on some uh, Chinese military mm-hmm. land, and uh, not much had ever been 
taken commercially to market from this Chinese military base. So uh, Graham had been in country, and they they, uh, um, took an entire truckload of of, uh, wolfenite specimens for us to review. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, we we managed to get some some wonderful pieces. The Mm -hmm. first load was very unfortunate in that the people who were collecting those specimens didn't really realize how sensitive uh, Mm -hmm. wolfenite crystals were. And if you put them in the back of a uh, large truck and not properly wrapped, not many of the wolfenites survive. But uh, Graham passed along some knowledge Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, shipping and packing, and and, uh, so these wolfenites uh, came to market. and we were fortunate enough to get a number of them over the years. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I think is really cool about this particular specimen of wolfenite from uh, unpronounceable area of China (laughs) uh, is that that, uh, the um, color contrast with, I believe, is calcite behind it. I think you're right. Um, Most of these are on a rock matrix, so there's not much color uh, contrast mm-hmm. between the dark or to this has got a very pleasing orange color, but often these are even darker, mm-hmm. uh, kind of orange brown colored, and then against the matrix they don't show up very well. But there have been some pockets with this uh, underlying layer of calcite upon which the wolfenites have grown and grown through, uh, that that. It, it, provides just a wonderful contrast that's very reminiscent of the wolfenites out of Los Lamentos where you get that nice white background for these brilliant orange wolfenite crystals. And these are really nice sized crystals. You're looking at individuals here up to a centimeter across. Mm -hmm. And um, just a a wonderful color contrast, wonderful crystallization here of the wolfenite crystals and some nice uh, bright white color mm-hmm. contrast with the underlying calcite. Just a beautiful specimen. Yep. What's the uh, size of this guy, Rich? Overall dimensions are 5.5 by 10.5 by 6 centimeters. Yeah, so it's a really nice size small mm-hmm. cabinet. You're a little over 4 inches across here. And uh, just a wonderful classic. If you're a collector of minerals from China, if you are a collector of wolfenites, which I know a lot of you specialize in this particular species, if you don't have a great one from China, this is really quite a nice Chinese mm-hmm. uh, wolfenite. And uh, what's the what's the price on this guy today, Rich? It's, this is another bargain. Let me uh, get to it here. Twelve hundred and fifty dollars. That's a great deal. Yep. Mm-hmm. Really, really beautiful piece. Yep. And so many times when we have things on Minerals Live, you'll notice if you're if you're a, a, a frequent shopper on the internet mm-hmm. or a sophisticated collector, you'll see that these prices are significantly less th- in general than you will see at at shows. Mm-hmm. So this is this is a super piece. When you get a four inch across wolfenite from this locality, that's that's got this kind of color contrast and this uh, degree of crystallization, mm-hmm. uh, you, you would expect to pay more than Absolutely. you'll get for this piece. This is really quite nice. Yep. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking here? Do you think you want to buy it? I <laughs> 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 these aren't going on final call. Okay? <laughs> oh, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, that's why you have to get up pretty early in the morning to beat Richard to the pick of mm-hmm. these these specimens. Sharp. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, now I know to start following him around when he's back there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is this is the kind of mm-hmm. competition you have here to pull things for the website. Mm-hmm. So, moving on. Specimen number three. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> this is another classic. Yep. I, I I've loved these for a lot of years. I think they're really really special. And this particular piece has got a really good color saturation more than uh, many from this location. This is a quartz variety amethyst from Bokenhautshoek in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know why I can say uh, Bokenhautshoek, but I can't say the uh, Chinese locality name. Maybe it's the X's and Z's. I think it's the X's and Z's and J's. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But but, uh, yeah, this particular locality, uh, we've handled, 
I can't even imagine the number of pieces. It's well in the several thousands, thousands of pieces yep. from from this locality because they're so flippin' cool. Yep. Uh, we bought a big collection out from South Africa, uh, the Uli and Anka Bauman collection, and uh, I think Uli was a partner in this mining project, mm. if I'm not mistaken. So he had a huge quantity of these minerals in mm -hmm. his uh, collection. But additionally, uh, we've bought big lots of these over the years because they're so cool. They call them both cactus quartz and spirit quartz. And one of the reasons they, they call them cactus quartz is because of the very unusual crystallization habit of these quartz crystals. You've got these long prismatic crystals that are amethyst in color. And then on the prism faces, you have additional terminal faces that grew along mm -hmm. the sides of these prism faces. And they kind of look like the needles of a cactus. And so they're, they're just really wonderful clusters of amethystine quartz that are uh, super aesthetic and they you can see even from this still photo how much they catch the light mm -hmm. because you've got dozens and dozens of facets if you will just like a gemstone mm -hmm. uh, these in this case they're terminations on the top of a, a of a quartz crystal but they look like they've been cut and polished and faceted because they're right. lustrous they really reflect the light quite quite strongly and the pieces just sparkle when they turn around on the turntable it's mm -hmm. it's you can see here on the turn on the turntable picture how nicely this sparkles now I would say to my eye the color of this piece is in the still photos a little stronger than it is in on person. the on the in person mm -hmm. and the uh video may be slightly weaker right. than the piece so right the when you get the piece you're going to get a, a color a, a hue that's going to be somewhere in between the two of those mm -hmm. and that, a lot of that has to do with the lighting they're right. being uh, observed in and also this particular uh digital camera that we use for photography uh it tends to mute out some of the some of the colors here mm -hmm. on the turntable right. so so um, i think you'll be really really pleased with this piece what's the overall size of this one rich overall dimensions of this piece are 6.5 by 8 by 7.5 centimeters and the longest of those cactus quartz crystals is 4.2 centimeters mm -hmm. so give you a good idea of how big this is yep mm -hmm. and what's the what's the price we're offering today today we're looking at 999 999 mm. yep didn't Doesn't, want to put an even thousand on there so no no no, no. <laughs> even though even though it's it's a great yeah. size piece you're right. looking at over three inches uh in two of the dimensions mm -hmm. and uh it's it's a great small cabinet piece with a nice amethystine color right. and this very interesting and aesthetic crystallization of these cactus quartz crystals. Right. So just a lovely, lovely piece, and it's under a thousand. Under a thousand dollars. Yep. So nine ninety nine. Yep. You didn't yeah. even tack on the decimal and put the other ninety nine. No, no. We're gonna give you that. You know. <laughs> Not a it's gas another station. discount. <laughs> Not a gas station. You're gonna get ninety nine point nine. Can't do that. So uh, specimen four. Moving on. So everything here so far we huh? own. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I uh, have any consignment stuff unless you consider the Detroit City uh -huh. Mine consignment. Hmm? So if someone is feeling in the holiday mood today, yes. mm -hmm. um, considering we, if you didn't buy yourself a Christmas present, mm -hmm. buy yourself a mineral collection. You can buy yourself a mineral collection. You can get all six of them. We'll take ten percent off of the prices we've been quoting you. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you buy the whole thing, we'll take another 10% 10 10 off. And we ship these out to you for nothing. For nothing. So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, mm -hmm. heck, why wouldn't you want them all? It's a no-brainer. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next piece, piece number four. We're yep. going to have six on the show today, so you're almost through. Well, we're not. We're, we're we, you know we're trying not to not to bore you too much. I'll go get some more if you want. <laughs> <laughs> this is another classic out uh -huh. of China, and uh, I, I was just writing uh, to to um, a person at a auction house recently mm -hmm. about these specertines. Uh, many of you know because we've talked about these over the years. Because. Uh, 
I think these are some of the coolest specertines that have ever come out on the planet. They're associated with the underlying felspar, um, and they're associated with wonderful smoky quartz crystals. So these these specertine crystals occurred both over top of the felspar and growing on the prism faces of these specertines, mm -hmm. uh, of these smoky quartz crystals, and they're just they're, they're amazing specimens, um, and. This locality was shut down, as far as we know, permanently. I think we, we got our first specimens from this locality in 2004. Right. Mm. And um, we, we continued to get them up until about 20, 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. And then the government stepped in in this area. Uh, somebody with some connections in China uh, said, you know... This granite knob that these specertine uh, veins are cutting through, the, the little pockets and veins, um, we don't really want that mining going on because we've got a nice uh, resort down the road from this mining claim area, and uh, we just don't want this unsightly mining activity going on. So um, the uh, strings were pulled and the mining uh, folks were kicked out and mm -hmm. uh no mining goes on here at all anymore right. and um so there it's kind of a limited edition if you will there, mm -hmm. there aren't any more come hitting the market from here and they pretty well dried up i mean it was a yeah. big productive area Very. for for mm -hmm. almost a decade and um then it it has even dried up in China. You used to see this at all the vendors we would stop in to, to check, and they're, they're more and more just completely gone mm -hmm. over in China at the, at the original source. So, um, you know, they're, they're becoming more and more uncommon, and they're super aesthetic and, and uh, beautiful pieces. Mm -hmm. The specertines are trapezohedral garnets. They're really interesting shapes, and they're highly lustrous, and they're on these prismatic quartz crystals, and they're just they're really lovely mm -hmm. um, and great color. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, a beautiful thing to add to your mineral collection. Yep. What's the size of this plate? It looks like a pretty good size specimen. Yeah, it's a nice specimen. It's 5.5 uh, by 10.5 by 5.5 centimeters. It's a popular size for this show. Yeah. <laughs> we like our small <laughs> yeah, cabinets here. Right, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so if you want if you want miniatures and thumbnails, Come back go, go to, uh, yeah, go yeah, to yeah, the yeah. website. <laughs> they, he's <Yeah>. got, uh, <laughs> Alan's got all sorts of small things. Yeah. <laughs> and big things. And too. big things, too. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the bright orange-red Spessartine garnets are really nice mm. and gemmy. They're highly lustrous, and uh, they're just all covering everything on mm -hmm. this specimen. Uh, the longest of the quartz crystals is 1.8 centimeters, and the Spessartines reach about 4 millimeters in size. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, just in a super aesthetic little piece. I like the, this one that Richard picked because it's kind of hummocky. There's mm -hmm. lots of uh, elevation changes on the piece, right. and it's more of a dome. Uh, uh, a lot of these were flat pl plates because they were uh, vein fillings and mm -hmm. they didn't have as much architecture as, the, as this one seems to have. Mm -hmm. Just a, a, a lovely piece, and uh, we would love to offer this to you at a super price again today for watching Minerals Live. Absolutely. And we are going to offer to you at Super Rice. One second here. Let me get to it. Drum roll. Boom. Just four hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Which is you couldn't buy this in China for four hundred and fifty dollars. I right agree. Now. No. I, I think it'd mm -hmm. be impossible. Mm -hmm. You couldn't buy it anywhere hardly. Mm -hmm. This this is a really really nice piece at four hundred and fifty bucks. Yep. Um, and again. Get your orders in quickly because, Richard, these will sell out, I guarantee you, at the price for that cabin site and the price for that Spessartine and mm -hmm. Smoky, mm -hmm. those things are going to be gone. Yeah, so uh, uh, I know a lot of you watch Minerals Live, not live, you it, watch the recorded right. version of it. So don't get discouraged and think, oh, gosh, I won't be able to get that because mm -hmm. uh, it's already ordered. Sometimes people slip up and don't order things. So yep. mm -hmm. uh, send Richard an email at minerals at collectorsedge.com and tell him you want that Spessartine, the cabin site, the wolf knight, all of them. Uh, all of them. Mm -hmm. 10%. And, <laughs> and if you miss out on the one we have here, uh -huh. I know there's some Spessartine and smoky mm -hmm. quartz specimens in the website. Yep. yep. No so, problem. Uh, Anyway, 
You I'm have a fun. fifth specimen. I do, and actually this one is a little smaller. Ah, well, it's lovely. This though. is a toenail, I believe. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. that, uh, it's a, that doesn't happen often. Well, yeah, once in a while. We uh, mine these things. Yes. And we prepare them here at the Collector's Edge. These are classics from the United States. And you don't have that many minerals that get found anymore in the continental United States, and we're happy to offer these. These are from the Elk Creek area in Meade County, South Dakota. And what's really cool about these things is, well, there's several things. One is (laughs) that they're a beautiful contrast in form and color. The barites are, would you say, beer bottle color? They're kind of an amber. Mm-hmm. Definitely an amber color. It's kind of an amber beer bottle color. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's jemmy, like you're looking through glass. You can see the calcite crystals right through this mm-hmm. barite crystal. Yep. Uh, well terminated, well formed. This barite crystal is three centimeters tall, and it's mm-hmm. jemmy, uh, well crystallized. Uh, and it's on a contrasting colored calcite mm-hmm. rather than being some white uninteresting calcite these are a kind of a bright yellow color Mm -hmm. and good size for the location yeah and good size for the location on this up to 1.3 centimeters Mm -hmm. on this piece so just a really lovely color contrast one of the things we're going to talk about with this is that it is repaired one time Mm -hmm. and i don't know where that repair is is it on the barite itself or is it reattached to the matrix i think it's pretty likely it's reattached to the matrix okay. but we could uh, if you're interested in the piece we'll get you a map of, of where, of, the, where repair the repair is, is. Yep. yeah but uh it's it's a great quality piece really super aesthetics the barite presents very well and the cool thing about these is that they're that they're found in sedimentary concretions Mm -hmm. so you get these large concretions they can be several several feet across two three four feet across and uh, the little vugs uh, most of the concretions have no barite and calcite within them or very little certainly not like this Mm -hmm. so you'll see these concretions weather out of the shale in and around uh, this elk creek area in meade county and you have to then open these and we use diamond chainsaws they used to use sledgehammers and things but but barite cleaves really easily and you Mm -hmm. use a sledgehammer on this and the barite crystals don't they don't survive so well Mm -hmm. so now we use uh we open these things up with uh, diamond chainsaws. Some of them contain big ammonites, Mm -hmm. so these concretions sometimes have have been sedimentary rock that's occurred around a pre-existing ammonite that was in the in the shale other times there were open vugs where or open channels where the solutions carrying the calcite and the barite could come in and deposit these lovely crystals within uh, very small um, chambers within these um, sedimentary concretions Mm -hmm. And then when they get back to the collector's edge after they've been harvested uh, on a ranch here in in Elk Creek area, uh, then our geniuses back in our <laughs> in our uh, trimming and cleaning lab will very carefully cut away the unnecessary parts of the concretion to mm-hmm. produce these lovely. Uh, calcite and barite specimens right. so they're really it's in many ways they're quite miraculous that they they occur in such a beautiful form mm-hmm. um, in the, within these concretions and then they can be safely extracted by our lab staff out of these and and then very affordably priced and offered for sale mm-hmm. the, every year we go up in the late summer mm-hmm. and collect concretions that have weathered out uh, and then they are brought back to collector's edge we trim them up mm-hmm. and uh, they usually make their first appearances either at the denver show or if they're if they're uh, such that they really require more work, they don't wind up uh, hitting the market until the Tucson show. But right. every year we wind up uh, generating some more of these. But I would say annually, we're lucky if we find fifteen to thirty really special pieces. Mm-hmm. And I and mm-hmm. in its size range, I would call this a really very mm-hmm. attractive, yeah. very special piece. It's right. really really an attractive color contrast mm-hmm. and the quality of the barite crystal is just lovely i agree so uh, 
What are we going to get for this one today, Rich? Uh, we're looking to get $225, and if it wasn't repaired, it would be significantly more. Yeah, yeah. yeah I look at this piece and I go, that yep. would easily be 750 or more. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's got a repair on it, and probably somewhere reattaching right. the bear right to the matrix, maybe a cleave closer down towards the matrix. Yep. But uh, like Richard said, if, if if you're interested in this piece and you want to know precisely where the repair line mm -hmm. is, we'll, we'll hit it with a UV light and yep. we'll give you the answer. Absolutely. So uh, anyway, mm -hmm. that was a killer piece. Uh, only $225, mm -hmm. and uh, you are more than welcome to uh, get a hold of Richard at minerals at collectorsedge.com yep. and order that piece right up. Right. And is uh, the usual tradition here. Yep, Minerals it's a Live. tradition. Well, most of the time, 90% of the shows. Specimen number six is a rotocrosite. And that's a really, this is a really good piece. I love piece. this piece. It's I beautiful. I love this piece. I do too. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was from the second major pocket found during 2020. And I used to always say it was from this year, but... We just crossed that boundary, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so uh, it was from 2020, and we can look back in the rearview mirror and see that there were only two major pockets found at Detroit City during 2020. Mm -hmm. One was Dino's pocket that had very gemmy, large crystals, but very few on matrix, and then there was Zach's pocket that had somewhat smaller rhodochrosite crystals, but very clean crystals, mm -hmm. not much damage to the rhodochrosite crystals, and beautiful association with other mineral species. And so uh, I think both Richard and I, in many cases, have been uh, drawn to Mm -hmm. uh, Zach's pocket pieces right. because they were so they were so uh, such beautiful color contrast between mm -hmm. the constituents. I think most of uh, the sulfides here were sphalerite, sphalerite but are there? Right. Uh, uh, There's yeah. some calcopyrite. On is there some well. calcopyrite? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, one of the cool things about this piece is the length of. We're, we're known at the Sweet Home Mine for producing specimens with needle quartz, mm -hmm. but seldom will you see quartz as needly as these needle quartz. Right. Because they are really, really thin uh -huh. and long, uh -huh. and so they really do look like needle quartz. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can tell the quality of this rhodochrosite from Richard's really nice close-up photo. A beautiful rhombohedral crystal, very gemmy, nice bright red, good luster. Um, <clears throat> one of the things about the uh, Zach's pocket rhodochrosites is that there was some slight solution etching, a natural solution etching uh, within the pocket. And so there, you can often, when you look at it, and I haven't studied this particular piece closely, but when you look at the surface of these rotos, you can actually see almost in, in a way like the... Um, surface etching features you would get on the Ukrainian burls mm. or aquamarines right. from Medina. On these you actually get a little surface relief, mm -hmm. uh, that, but there still is luster there, mm -hmm. but the, instead of being a, a mere polished surface like you would get in some sweet home pockets where there's no solution etching, there's a tiny little bit on these, and you can see as it's going around on the turntable you're getting a nice luster flash even in this light, uh, even in this uh, light, uh, light <laughs> fluorescent that light, he yeah. has here, fluorescent light, but but nonetheless, so you do have good luster, but you have a little bit of solution etching, mm -hmm. and it's not real deep like a Ukrainian uh, Heliodor mm -hmm. or, a, or a Medina Aqua, but there is, it's obvious on many of the crystals that, that nature was providing a little surface etching that uh, gave some, some texture to the surface of these crystals. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's they're really beautiful, and the color contrast between the quartz and the sphalerite and the roto is just beautiful. These are, are wonderful pieces out of Zach's pocket, and for those of you that don't know our company all that well and have never met Zach, Zach, the person who this pocket was named after, is one of our lab rock doctors mm -hmm. who uh, trims and cleans uh, mineral specimens for us. And Zach was honored by having this lovely pocket uh, named after him. Yes. And he is the only person I know that is actually taller than Brian. 
<laughs> That's true. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By an inch, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar right, right, and a few right, others, right, but, yeah, but yeah, Zach yeah. is going the one to the around NBA. Here. Yeah. 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 When you go into the NBA, you get <laughs> right. a few. But, uh, yeah, they, he's he's a tall young man yes. and very talented. He, he very, does uh, yeah, very good very work in the lab. Uh, we go back, Richard and I go back to the lab every day multiple times and look at all the new minerals that mm-hmm. have come in. And Zach and Rob are back there cleaning them and mm-hmm. deciding where to trim them. And we just have great fun going yep. back and say, hey, Zach, we need to trim this off and this off and come in here and clean this. And uh, an hour or two later... We go back in there and go, darn, yeah. you did it perfectly. It mm-hmm. looks just like it should. So uh, anyway, it's fun to fun to work here, mm-hmm. and it's fun to uh, see all the transformation that occurred to the mineral specimens exactly. as, as they're being uh, prepared to go to market. Yep. Mm-hmm. And this is one of them. Yep. So uh, mm-hmm. a great piece. What's the size of this guy, Rick? The specimen measures 4.5 by 7.5 by 5 centimeters. And the uh, roto, the main one there that we've been highlighting in some of the close-ups, is 9 millimeters on edge. Mm -hmm. And the length of the longest of these needle quartz is 1.7 centimeters. So you can see how proportionally they're not very wide, but they're really long. Mm -hmm. So 1.7 centimeters. Absolutely. And uh, this is a very attractive very nice small cabinet size piece it's about mm-hmm. three inches across mm-hmm. and the price on it's extremely fair yep mm. 2450 dollars yeah and if you knew what brian was spending per month up there you would realize yeah how, 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 how extremely value oriented this piece is. yeah it really is i mean it's a super nice piece. well you i probably i, I price one some, I guess against plaid, it's not so probably good. doesn't stand yeah. that great. <laughs> but, mm, I priced nice one. I priced one yesterday of mm-hmm. the new production out mm-hmm. of this pocket. That, gosh, it's it's slightly bigger, and the mm-hmm. roto may be twice the size. Mm-hmm. But I put a, a retail sticker price of seventeen thousand on the piece. Yeah. I mean, it's it it took my breath away. I love the little piece, right. and I go, this is not that far behind. Far it, it, if mm-hmm. uh, you know, I think yep. uh, the price at twenty four fifty is really mm-hmm. a great. price. Price. So, yep. mm-hmm. if you've been looking to add a wonderful sweet home mine rhodochrosite to your collection, this one's out of the new Detroit City portal at the mm-hmm. Sweet Home Mine. Don't hesitate to, um, to send Richard an email on this at minerals at collectorsedge.com. Absolutely. Well, that brings us to the close of another Minerals Live. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We made it all the way through. We did. Was it hard to stay awake for all of this? No, it was very exciting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We could tell by how much you were talking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt Steve. Thank you. Oh, yeah. When I'm on a roll, yeah, no, when I'm no, on a roll, it's hard to get, it's hard to get me off yeah. of a roll. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, Richard was just saying how nice it is to have somebody who uh, chooses their words wisely well, and careful, doesn't yeah. rattle on like Steve. <laughs> so, <laughs> you so. got to have a balance, you know. <laughs> you got to have a balance. And yang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phil goodness. would challenge you from time to time when he was on. Yeah, yeah he, 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 he would. talk pretty good. Too. He, he'd <laughs> talk a while. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we, mm. we thank everybody for Absolutely. tuning in. I'm sorry we've been we've been absent for so long. So, yeah. We've been we've been traveling the world, both Richard and I selling mm-hmm. rocks and and we went through the one the wonderful holiday period. Mm-hmm. So both of us had a little time off. And right. so now we're back and excited about minerals in twenty twenty one and, and wanting to uh, offer you the best and fine minerals. I just thought of something. We never got oh. a chance to wear our Santa. Hats oh, we didn't this year. get to wear them this year, did we? No. Well, it's too late now. Too late now. <laughs> Funny how I have them so handy. Yes, <laughs> it was. But uh, maybe for St. Patrick's Day, we'll wear something appropriate. There you go. We'll all wear green shamrocks. or something yep. and shamrocks <laughs> and things of that sort. Yep. So we should be on pretty regular back by then when we're back from Tucson. Yeah. So, and we hope to see you down in Tucson. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to be there twice. Come mm-hmm. to see us both times. We'll have new stuff uh, at both both periods and. Don't hesitate to come down January 28th through February 7th and see yep. Richard and I. There'll be plenty of room to safe, safely distance and mm-hmm. relax from each other. And you'll have 10 cases full of fine mineral specimens. Can't beat it. Mm-hmm. Can't beat it. You we'll want to come down. and all that kind of stuff. There you go. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. Mm-hmm. And thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks thanks for having me. <laughs> We look forward to your critiques on how to do this a little better. Yes.
How about he's already got some tape. ideas to make. He, the he said he whatever. wrote duct tape down. Duct tape. I don't know what it was. I think it meant for me. Oh, but well, uh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. All right. Anyway, thank you, everybody, and we'll catch you next week. At least one more week before I head out. So, see ya. take care.